Before we dive into the color correction process to correct our images, I first want to show you a couple of different color correction tools in Adobe Premiere Pro. The Auto Color Tool, the Fast Color Corrector, and the Three-Way Color Corrector. This is just going to be a sort of generic introduction to these tools. I won't really be correcting too much of anything, but I'll be showing you a little bit about what each of these tools do. In the next movie, however, we'll take the three-way color corrector through the entire process to correct our images. I'm going to just come over to my effects tab here, and I'm going to just type in the word color. And you can see how many of these effects actually deal with color correction. We're going to start off by using the auto color effect, and I'm just going to drag these on to these first two images. The auto color tool adjusts the contrast and color of a clip by neutralizing the midtones and limiting the range of the black and white values. So it didn't do too bad of a job at all. Here is Felicia and here is Anita. If I click on Felicia here and go to the effect controls, here's the auto color effect. You can see that there's a couple of parameters here that you can change, but if you need more adjustment, you're probably gonna need to just go on to the next tool. But I'm just gonna show you the before and after of this one and before and after of this one. So it does a decent job, but again, if you need something more powerful, you move on. That's where the fast color corrector comes in. I'll type in fast, and here it is. I'll just throw it on these next series of images, like so. And I'll come to Felicia here and select it. And let's take a look at what we have here. So while the auto color effect does an automatic analysis of the contrast and color balance issues, the fast color corrector lets you input the values of what should be black, what should be white, and so on. As you can see, it hasn't done anything yet. It's waiting for me to input those values. So there's a lot I can do, but I'm gonna come down to this part right here, black level, gray level, and white level. And I'm just going to click on this little eyedropper, and I'm gonna define what should be black, and what should be white. And when I do that, you can see that the image really improves in brightness and contrast. I think it definitely adjusted things a little bit too much, so you can use these sliders here to back off a little bit. And then you have a mid-tone slider as well to brighten or darken the image up accordingly. Now up here is the color wheel where you can adjust your chroma or color of the image. The color wheel is operated by a puck control, so the direction that I drag this puck is the color that I add. The further out from the center that I drag it adds saturation to the image. So when I drag this, notice that the controls below adjust accordingly. I'll go ahead and drag that down so we can see both happening at the same time. So if you imagine that the puck is in the middle, there's no change, and as I drag from the center toward orange, then every pixel in the image is getting more and more orange. And specifically, this corresponds to the balance magnitude control and the balance angle control. You can take a look down there that they are changing. I won't go through all of these, but just quickly, if you take a look at hue angle, that corresponds to this ring here. So as you adjust your hue angle, that number changes. And you normally don't touch this too much except for just very subtle adjustments. If you change your hue angle too much, it doesn't look very natural. So I'm gonna just reset that for now. And then finally, you have balance gain, which controls your midtone adjustments. And that corresponds to this right here. So if you leave this more towards the middle, you have a subtle adjustment. If you drag it out towards the edge, you can see that it's a lot more drastic. This is usually not what you want, so usually it's just like a tiny little adjustment that you make out from the middle. You can see that the image is sort of warming up in the midtones. And again, that's down here. You can increase it with this value shuttle. You can also reset it over here. Below all of that is the saturation, so if you need to up your saturation, you can do that as well. Down here below my input values are my output levels. And this is where I can clamp my white and black values so that it clips any values above my preset white value or below my preset black value. So video black is 16 and video white is 235. So I can put those values in and the image adjusts accordingly. If I want to take a look at what this image looked like before and after, again, that's up here. I can just click on this little FX icon. This is before and this is after. And you can also put on the split view right here, where you can simultaneously look at it, horizontal, vertical, and you can also adjust the percentage, like so. So again, we haven't corrected this image officially, but it does look a lot better based on a lot of the changes that we just made. Now let's move on to the three-way color corrector. 
Let's just type that in. Three way color corrector, and I'll drop these onto the last two images. Okay, and you can see here that it's been applied, and again, no change in the image. I must actually input the values myself. And again, we have the ability to set our white and black values under auto levels, which is usually where I like to start. So again, I'm just going to click on black and white. Again, it did a little bit too much, so you can come up to input levels and adjust those a little bit if you like. Again, when we do this officially, we'll be using video scopes to actually measure these values. Right now, I'm just doing this with my eyes. But the special thing about the three-way color corrector is that now we have three color wheels, and I'm able to adjust the chroma in my shadows, mid-tones, and highlights. So instead of just having one wheel, where when I drag the puck out from the center, every single pixel in the image becomes more and more of one color, now I can isolate it. I also have the little eyedroppers underneath each of these, which will help me out. So I can say, all right, this is supposed to be white, and I can say this is supposed to be black. And if I had a neutral gray in my image, I could sample that as well. The difference between these eyedroppers and the ones down below is that these eyedroppers are removing color casts. So it's making sure I have a pure white and a pure black. Whereas the ones down below, the auto levels, are making sure that my blacks are dark enough and my whites are light enough. I can also just increase the warmth in just my midtones, or I can increase the warmth in just my shadows and I can reset that right over here. If I go down and I open up saturation, you'll notice that again, I have very specific controls for my shadows, midtones, and highlights. So if I just want to increase the saturation for my midtones, I can do that and I can leave my shadows and highlights alone. Or I might want to give different saturation values to my midtones, my shadows, and maybe just overall in my master control. And right under that is secondary color correction. And this allows me to set up specific limits on which hues to correct. So I can say that instead of correcting my entire image, I just want to correct the blues or the reds or the greens. I can really kind of set a value on that. I'm going to twirl that up for now. So again, this was a very high level look at several of the color correction tools in Adobe Premiere Pro. We're going to move on by taking this, the three-way color corrector, through the proper color correction workflow using our eyes as well as these controls and using our video scopes so that we can measure our adjustments.